What we're going to talk about next is basically the graphs of logarithmic functions. But before we do that, what we're going to do is try to tie that into some of our background knowledge. So what we're going to do is we're going to take f of x is equal to x squared, and we're going to find the inverse of that function. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to realize f of x is the same thing as y. And then to find the inverse of a function, what you're going to do is you're going to switch x and y. So we'll put x and then y here. So we'll say this is really going to be x is equal to 2 to the y power. Now, to be able to solve that for y, what I need to do is get rid of the exponential function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come and take the log base 2 of both sides. And the reason I'll take the log base 2 is because I want to get rid of the base of 2 in my exponential function. So I need the bases to be the same in a problem like this. So log base 2 of both sides, and the reason I chose that is because it's going to cancel my logs, my exponential function. So what I'll get is over on the right side, I'll get y is equal to the log base 2 of x. And the reason this is important to us is to show us how these two functions are related to each other. So when we look at our graphs, I've already graphed here uh, the graph of f of x to be uh, 2 to the x power. And you can see I plugged in some x's to get my uh, ordered pairs, so I've graphed that. We've done this multiple times. And now we're going to look at the graph of g of x is equal to the log base 2 of x. Well, to tell you the truth, I really don't have to do too much to do this. Okay, One thing I could do is I could go ahead and take all of my uh, ordered pairs from my, my exponential function and switch them, because that's what you can do with the graphs of inverse functions. Or one thing I could do is say, uh, 2 to what power will give me certain things. So as long as I pick some values that I know I can get answers to, for instance, log base 2 of 4, if I do log base 2 of 4, I know that answer is 2. And you can see here, looking over here, we have 2 comma 4, so we're going to have 4 comma 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2. So that ordered pair will be right there. And if you switch this, so for instance, this point is 0 comma 1, so 1 comma 0 will be a point. This is 1 comma 2, so 2 comma 1. Uh, we already did this point right here. This point right here is 8, no, 3 comma 8, so we use 8 comma 3. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3. And then we get into some of these other ones. So uh, if you look, this is negative 1 comma 1 half, so we'll be at 1 half comma negative 1. This right here is negative 2 comma 1 fourth, so we'll be at 1 fourth comma negative 2. So when we end up graphing this, our function will look a little bit like this. So just like our exponential function, it kind of had a similar, you know, if you could block out part of your exponential function and take this out, it almost looks like a quadratic. Well, the logarithmic function, as you can see, looks similar to a square root if you were to take off the tail right there. But that tail exists and it's part of our function, so don't get those confused. And what you need to know, or what you need to remember, I guess is the best way to say it, is that inverse functions are reflexed about the line y is equal to x. So if you were to fold about that uh, dashed line, those two graphs should overlap. Now one more thing that we need to talk about this, there's some characteristics. So for instance, talking about an exponential function, we know our domain is all real numbers. Our range for us is going to be 0, comma infinity. We know that we have a horizontal asymptote to be at y is equal to 0. And then also we have a y-intercept that has an ordered pair 0, comma 1. Well, if you're looking at the exponential function, it has similar characteristics. Now we know to find the exponential function, uh, or to find the logarithm rather, what we're going to do is we're going to switch the x and the y's. So the domain of the uh, exponential function will end up being the range of the logarithmic equation. Whoops, forgot the other word there. We know that the range of our exponential function will be the domain of our logarithm. Here we had a nice little horizontal asymptote y is equal to 0. This time we'll have a vertical asymptote x is equal to 0. And we know we had a y-intercept of 0, comma 1. So therefore this time all of our, your logarithmic functions will have an x-intercept of 1, comma 0. 
So very beneficial to us to know that these two graphs are inverses of each other. Now one thing that this will open up, as you'll see later on when we get into equations, is we do have a limited domain. So what's going to happen is we'll have the chance for extraneous solutions because what you should see is we cannot take the log of a negative number nor can you take the log of zero. And just to show you, let me see if I can't get my calculator to work here. So working this out, we can just try a couple. Logs on your calculator, you can hit the log button right here, log of negative one. As you can see, it says error, non-real answer. So obviously, you know you can't take that. And if we do the log of zero, again, it says error domain. So definitely some issues. It's basically going to require us to check values when we plug them back in to our equations.